you got to have the skill. I mean, if you want to be the best in the world, you've got to be skills for it. So you had a setback when you got injured. Yeah. What was going through your mind when you realized you were no longer going to be able to play football? Um, my whole identity was wrapped around this. My whole identity was, I'm an athlete, I'm a football player, and if I can no longer be that identity, then who am I? So it was like a question of like, well, who am I? If I'm not this, what am I? Who am I? What's yeah. my purpose? So it was a couple of years of trying to figure out, okay, what's, what's the rest of my life gonna look like? Or at least the next five years or something. And um, it's hard, man. I think anytime someone goes through a breakup in a relationship, that relationship is your identity. Yeah. You're like, well, this is my partner. This is my girlfriend. This is my fiance. This is my your other uh, half. Yeah, your other half. And everyone knew us as a couple, and now we're not. So that identity is stripped of me. So you go through of like, okay, well, that's why a lot of people they'll be single for a while. They either jump right back into a relationship because they don't know how to handle it being single, or they'll be single and they'll learn all these new things about themselves. They're like, oh, I forgot how much I used to love doing this and I used to like doing this, and they gain their kind of identity back. Um, same thing with a career, when you're worth a brand for so long and then you no longer work for that brand. So many people know you as the person that worked at that company. Maybe you were important in that company and now you no longer have that importance and you lost the job or you decided to leave and try something else and you're not that anymore. It's a new transition. So it's a transition, yeah. So I think that's the scariest part is uncertainty. So in that two years, what were some of the things you did while trying to find yourself? I seeked out to a lot of mentors. I just said I need to find people who have achieved something yeah. at a high level. It didn't matter what industry, I just wanted to meet people who had achieved more than I had, and that was pretty much everyone. Who were some of the mentors? I had some local mentors in Columbus, um, a guy named Frank Agan, who was a great public speaker and also had written a bunch of books. He taught me how to speak, and, and I wrote my first book with him. Yeah. I had Chris Hawk, who was a friend of mine. And he's been on the show, great guy. Yeah, yeah. he's a mentor and a friend of mine now, and, he taught me about branding and design. He's an inventor. He taught me about you know sales, marketing, everything. So I learned so much about having an idea and turning it into a physical thing that people bought from him. Um, and then I had another great mentor named Stuart Jenkins who just taught me about life and how to be a good human being. And how it's to a good thing to have. <laughs> yeah, just like he was just really successful at everything. Like he had a great kids, great wife, great way of his like essence was just so profound. He was very successful in business as well. And I was just like, you're just a great role model. We all need that. Yeah. And again, we are talking before about just so many people go for the dollar. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need the money to sustain, but when you start going towards a passion and actually doing things for a bigger impact, people trust you more yeah. and you get more in return. I think so many people need to see that early on. And it takes, heck, maybe a divorce or yeah. something bad to happen in their life where they've realized it. Yeah. It's cool to see you realize it at such a young age. So for you, that transition, LinkedIn, webinars, mm -hmm. and now your podcast show. Yep. How have you been able to transition your brand? Because like you said before, when you're known for something, you have to change it. How yeah. do you transition your brand? Reinvention is hard because <laughs> some people, you know, so many people, I started getting into LinkedIn early on and so many people saw me as the LinkedIn guy because I branded myself as that. Yeah. I was like, this is who I am. This is another like identity that I'm gonna wear because I wanted to build my personal brand around that. And then as I transitioned out of it, it was hard because everyone kept saying, well, aren't you this guy and aren't you this guy? I said, no, now this is what I'm focused on. And I'm constantly doing that. Like, this is what I'm focused on, this is what I'm focused on. And um, it's challenging. You gotta, I think it starts with the design, you know, as opposed to saying everything that's one thing in the past. <laughs> you gotta Show it. design so that when people see it, they say, okay, I can see what this is now. And maybe some people are going to linger from past conversations, but you're just putting it out there. And then you're messaging, you're talking about new things, you're putting it out there on social media as well to show people what you're going to be now. So why did you get in podcasting when you first started, what, five I got years in, ago? Yeah, I got in for a few reasons. One, I was in transition. I had sold a company, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next. Yeah. I was like, what do I want to talk about? Who do I want to be? Um, what business do I want to build? And I was in LA, stuck in traffic, and just kind of going through a lot of stuff in my life through the transition from my business, a bad breakup I was going through, and moving to a new city from New York where I was before. I just felt like a little stuck in general. Mm -hmm. Like everything was kind of off. And I said, I really want to do something for me that even if it doesn't make money, it would fuel me. 
and I have these great relationships with powerful and successful people in multiple industries. I just want to start having those conversations with people to learn myself and then also share that wisdom with others. Because every time I was having those conversations, I was like, man, if people could hear this, it would be really powerful for them. And so that's why I created it. And I started asking a couple friends who had podcasts. And I was just like, tell me more about this. Is this yeah. thing big or is this going to be big? And they were like, it's our favorite thing to do. You know, we quality leads for our business. And it's just fun. Who was your mentor at the time when you... When I didn't you have any mentors. I, I, I asked... I called Pat Flynn and I called Derek Halper and I just asked them like for 20 minutes, like tell me about podcasting, just like how it is for you and if you like it or not. And they were like, yeah, we love it. And so I was like, huh. <laughs> I, I just had a feeling like it was going to blow up. Like this was before you really, everyone had a smart, there was smartphones were coming almost like everyone had them, but they weren't yet. Um, podcasting was easier to access on the phones and in cars. And it was just like, starting to be easier than having to go on iTunes and like find the link. It was just right on your phone. And so I just had a feeling like that was just going to take off. And then luckily, it did. It did. You know, it did. And well, Serial and all these other shows became mainstream. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I just kind of got in before everyone else tried to. And it was So if, if somebody wanted to get in right now, what does that look like? Is it yeah, I would say don't. I would don't say do don't it. do it. Unless you're going to be so different and unique. Uh, if your show is going to be anything like someone else's show, then don't do it. Then what would you tell them to do instead? I would say create a series that's never been done. So if you're going to do a podcast, create a series of something that's never been done and do it so well produced that people have to talk about it. So if they didn't do podcasting, what would be your, your other option? I think video is just going to constantly be big. I agree. If you're trying to get your con, if you're trying to build an audience, and get content out there. I think video, video is powerful. and personal brand, I think a video, video content is powerful if done well and done right. So where, tell me your transition because you're doing podcasting but you're doing a lot more video. Mm -hmm. What's next for you with video? Uh, <laughs> well, documentaries. Yeah. I think I'm always trying to push the boundaries of telling stories and providing valuable content. And now the whole wave is everyone's in a podcast. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, well, what's the thing that no one's willing to invest in because it's hard and it's challenging and it's not easy to do and they don't know how to get into it. And I see Netflix and Facebook and these other platforms who are buying content, premium content, as a place to get in and tap into new audiences. So we're filming a documentary right now. I think you saw it at the, the Summit of Greatness. Yeah. And it's a big investment. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. <laughs> exactly. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy. It's a massive risk. But I've also felt like I've put in the reps and I've got the team that has proven results from doing documentaries before with other big names that I'm like, okay, even though it's a big risk and a lot in terms of the money, I feel like it could pay off in such a massive way if we execute it the way that they have in the past and that I can and with my relationships. I think it could be massive. So, and so it's like using the theme of video and storytelling and creating content and thinking of creative ways to get ahead of the curve, not jumping into something now in an average way. If you're going to jump into something that's already taking off, like podcasting, make it so unique, so different that people have to talk about it. But they're probably not going to listen to you unless you've already got a massive audience. Yeah. So what's the angle that's going to be different than all the other podcasts. If it's a business-related show, what's the angle that's different than every other business-related show? If it's a fitness show, what's the angle that's different than every other show? And do that. Um, but I'm always thinking of, okay, what's the thing that is gonna be accessible in two to three years but isn't yet? <laughs>